friend. I hope you are doing well. I want to share my story with you. I hope it will be helpful for someone. I used to live in Ukraine, in small Melitopol city in the Parisia region. It's 7,000 miles away by train. My brother still lives there in a small village. My sister lives in big city. I was born in a small village in Kherson region, where the terrain is very flat and bare. There are no mountains or hills there, just blue sky and green and yellow fields around. It's so beautiful there. My food in my childhood was very delicious because my grandmother cooked very well. And my mother and my aunt were very good cook well. I remember that my favorite food was buckwheat with milk. And I used to like sweet pierogi made by my grandmother. And my aunt was very good in baking strudel with puppy seeds. Jello made by my mother was so delicious. I remember a big orchard in our household. We grow cherries, apricots, and pears. I grew up, graduated from school, from college, from university, and got my first job, got married. And I raised my two children with my husband. Unfortunately, he passed away after a long battle with cancer. I met my second husband here in Canada. So we have a big extended family now because our children have kids too. I meet my children and grandchildren who live in Ukraine, but I live, I like to live here in Canada. My husband is very attentive and supportive person. He helped me overcome all challenges that I faced when I came here in 2013. I knew English a little bit, but I wanted to find a good job and have possibility for socializing. I was looking for opportunity. And my island of hope in the journey became a new Canadian center. Well educated, dedicated, and supportive people from the Canadian Center led me in my journey and helped me to overcome all difficulties. They helped me find my tutor, English facilitator, my first English class, and my first job in Canada. I'm so grateful to the Canadian fans, to everyone who works in this beautiful, wonderful organization. They helped me to start to study in Fleming College, where I studied English for six months. I became able to find my job, the job in uh, Upper the Time and Residence, where I started to work in 2000. I'm proud to be a part of a great Applewood family. I still study English. Now I study English in faith at CCVF. Our teacher, Christine Pyatt, teaches how to be a great Canadian. And New Canadian Zen has shown me an opportunity to become a speaker 
and I joined at a Smarters club two years ago. And now I grow confident and I help to deliver speeches to my friends, colleagues, my classmates, and also my fellow Smarters. I enjoy to spend time with my friend, families and friends. Now we have online meetings with women groups from NCC where we study how to cook, how to um, paint pictures and we have a great conversation there. I'm happy to attend this meeting. And I want to finish my speech with um, wonderful words, some quotations from Susan Horrid Shaw. Sometimes we think that you need to be perfect, that you cannot make mistakes. You put too much pressure on yourself. I wish that you would realize that you are human being, like everyone else, capable of reaching your great potential, but not capable of being perfect. So please, just do your best and realize that this is enough. Don't compare yourself to everyone. Be happy to be the wonderful, unique, a very special person who you are. Nina, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing well, very well, thank you. Uh, I know that in your speech you talked about that you're working at a retirement re a retirement residence, like an essential worker right now, too, so you are still working. In fact, so how are you managing? Um, yes, uh, it's a uh, pretty hard time for everyone. And uh, our staff became ready to serve our residence in a little bit different way. So we started to wear masks and um, deliver food to each room. Yeah, it's uh, pretty difficult actually because it's, uh, it's hard work. You need more time. Yeah. And sometimes uh, you want to work somewhere, have some more activities, meet friends, but it's not possible now. Yeah. <laughs> More, we have to be stronger. Be stronger, yeah. That's very true for everyone uh, right now. You just said that that times when you want to be involved in more activities and be able to meet your friends. Have you been able to do any of that online? Oh, yes. It's, it's great that we have this possibility. Uh, our class teaches us uh, English and also teaches us to be uh, great people. Now it's like uh, I really enjoy it because uh, it's helpful. We can all material online. We can check it home. They give us homework, and when we meet online, we can talk to each other. But we have like uh, very good opportunity to improve our speaking skills. And now, right now, we're doing uh, some project. It's called Canada Project. Everyone has to choose their uh, own topic about Canada and present the speech to audience. Mm. You have uh, uh, quite a bit of experience in, in doing that too, right? From your experience with Swiss Masters Club. <laughs> you want to share a little bit about, about that, that club and how you got involved with the Peterborough Swiss Masters? Yes, Peter Motors Masters, great club, and I really excited to be part of this uh, wonderful organization. 
Actually, I joined Peter Rocket's Masters more than two years ago. Yeah, I remember now, it was one time ago when uh, <laughs> one wonderful person, his name is Leon, I came to the Canadian Center and uh, teaches us how to deliver speeches. We have some small few weeks uh, course of those master's um, classes. Uh, and uh, I became so excited about it. I, I was able to join the classes and I learned uh, some communication skills as well and uh, conversation skills too. So it helped me a lot. Yeah, when I first met you, about a year and a half ago and we were chatting and then just before I came onto the call today with you I was having a look at your bio online so I wanted to read the very first line it says arriving in Canada in 2013 from Ukraine Olina spoke very little English and was initially nervous to speak and so I wanted to, to know how did you go from arriving in Canada being nervous to speak to now speaking in front of crowds uh, going to various events and speaking here. How, how did you build that confidence to be able to speak in English? Oh, I learned from everywhere actually. It was from my husband, he helped me. I asked him every small, like, how to say this, how to say that. <laughs> and um, when I came to the Canadian Senate, I was uh, very happy that uh, they can provide the t tutor and uh, they helped me to join English class in Clemens College. I uh, lost English uh, a lot in Clemens College, but uh, I finished my class because I have to go to work. I found a job. I finished uh, studying, but I knew that I have, still, I have to continue study. And I uh, visited uh, classes in the Canadian Center as well. With Diane Kovancilla was my first teacher. I remember she's a great teacher actually. I thank all to her. She helped me a lot in learning from, from beginners. So it was very helpful. But I found that uh, I still have uh, to find some like class to study uh, in class, to have homework, and I joined, uh, still it uh, was a recommendation from the Indian Center to join class in space from the city. Yeah, so now I study here and we have very, very good class, very good atmosphere. Yeah, it, it, it seems like you have used a lot of supports to be able to develop your English English skills because you really wanted to be able to master English the English language and uh, you said in your speech that um, you wanted to get a job but in order to be able to get a job you needed to first learn the language. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's very important uh, to have good English conversation skills yeah. when you're um, looking for a job. For sure. As I hear um, your experiences coming to Peterborough and your story, it's it's very much one that you embrace all opportunities that come your way, particularly when it comes to learning the language and the culture. Um, but I was also wondering, aside from the language, what other challenges did you face when you arrived in Peterborough and even 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 right now? Yeah, that was a lot of challenges because um, it's different culture have to use it and uh, different situation like um, I do not have conversation with people but I can't because I don't know language very well that uh, was pretty hard and uh, I have to learn some uh, habits of people they holiday how, how they uh, act in different situations so it's a lot of learning and uh, a lot of studying. Like it's hard job to start. And when you just start, it's harder when you start. But after you go ahead, 
it became easier and easier and we became uh, more uh, um, more strong. <laughs> So, so for, for me personally, I have um, I came to Canada in 2013 as well, and before that I lived in, in two countries, so I've lived uh, for my life in three different countries. So growing up for me, um, the idea of home and the idea of belonging has always been a, a topic that I, I, I don't quite understand and I don't quite uh, know how to explain. So I, I wondered for you, uh, how do you explain and how do you understand and feel at home? What do you think of the, the concept of belonging? Um, that's a good question, Cynthia. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I like Ukraine and I like to be there when I come for visit. But uh, I feel like Canada became my second home. And I like um, the pe people here in Canada. I think especially in Peterborough. People so friendly. The nature is so beautiful in Canada as well. Do you remember the first moment when in Peterborough when you felt like you belonged here and that you were were at home here in Peterborough? Yes, I feel like I'm at home because I lived here for six years and. Uh, I um, found job here, I study here, I learn a lot from, from people, uh, I like to be a person who learns something new, which I have possibility here, like I have before, before March, I have possibility to visit uh, different uh, different clubs, like birds watching, you uh, you can go to join club and um, exercise, for example, to be healthy and to be strong. So people have different uh, hobbies here and it's possible uh, to become a member of different organization and become more capable Confidence, and that makes me happy. Good. That's awesome. That's wonderful. I wanted to ask you, what was your first impressions uh, when you arrived here in Canada, and specifically in Peterborough? Yeah, I first time I came for visit. It was August. It was summer, so the temperature was beautiful. A lot of flowers. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I met my husband. Took me next day to farmers market. Farmers yeah. boys. There are some uh, flowers, some plants for sale. That's good. And now it's been, uh, what, six years later? And yeah. you're still here. So you still like it in Peterborough, six years later? I feel like I'm less excited now. Like less so excited now? <laughs> yeah. It's been uh, spring, yeah? And I walk around and I remember when I first time I still enjoy it, I still enjoy it. Yeah. So beautiful. That's um, good. <laughs> so it was about uh, nine months ago when I, uh, when I had asked you if you would share your story as part of the New Canadian Centre's Living Library uh, project and you enthusiastically said yes. Tell me why it was that you felt that it was important to share your, your story. Well, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Uh, it was important for me because I attend uh, Canadian things and I saw a lot of people just, they just came to Canada and they need some help, some support and they need uh, some example of people who came here to Canada not too far ago and uh, to find job, to learn English and to find some opportunities here. And so I decided to share my story and explain how it was with me. And I hope it will be helpful for people who just came to Canada and 
became of our uh, community and became Canadians. That's why I decided to share my story. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story. Uh, it's not an easy thing to bear your, your story and, and to share it so openly. So thank you for, for doing that and, and for sharing with us today and, 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 and every other time as well. Thank you very much, Pisham. Oh, you're, you're, you're very welcome. Thank you for being part of it. 